Good morning, everyone. Today, July 6, we are to commence the semi-finals of the Speaker's National Youth Debating Competition. We are now down to four teams, and at the end of today, we will know the finalists. Finals will be held at the National Convention Center, the Arthur Chung Convention Center, at 2 p.m. on Friday. Today, our esteemed judges for this semi-final debate are Dr. Valerie Gurusami Smith, our chief judge today. Dr. Gurusami Smith has been an educator for over 42 years at the primary, secondary, and university levels. She has been a CXC English A and B and mathematics teacher for over 35 years and an English lecturer at the University of Guyana for more than 20. Dr. Gurusami Smith is the director of the Berea Royal College International. She has been in the pastoral ministry for more than 21 years. She has been a general counselor, motivational speaker, and debating coach. She is a two-time winner of the University of Ghana Interfaculty Debating Competition. She has debated in New York and St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. She is the founder and coach of the course Mastering the Art of Public Speaking. Our next judge is Ms. Miracle Miller. Miracle is an active volunteer at the Georgetown Stabro Leo's Club, where she enjoys assisting people. Her love for the English language propelled her to the position of best graduating English student in the year 2012, when she completed her high school at Christ Church Secondary School. In 2016 and 2017, Judge Miller participated in a youth training program hosted by the Youth Empowerment Unit of the Department of Youth at the Madawini Training Center. She was selected to be one of Guyana's Youth Ambassadors to the United Nations Assembly held at UN headquarters in 2018. Ms. Miller copped the Best Speaker Award for our Youth Parliament 2018. Today, she is in the final month of completing her BSc in Applied and Exploration Geology. Ms. Miller holds a firm belief in serving. Our third judge today is Mr. Neil Marks. Mr. Marks has worked in the print and broadcast media for over 22 years. He currently works as a producer and editorial consultant with Newsroom while working as Ghana's correspondent for Reuters. Judge Mark's work has appeared in the New York Times, the BBC, and the UK Guardian. He is the immediate past president of the Ghana Press Association. Judge Marks serves as project volunteer on community enhancement. Apart from English, Judge Marks speaks Mandarin. He is an advocate for Creole language and his goal includes his goals include the establishment of community based news hubs in minority languages. The proposing team today is the Queenstown Youth Group. The aim of the Queenstown Youth Group is to provide assistance and guidance to youth and to create a space for them to interact. The group acquires funding from the community, the police G division, and other organizations. They have three speakers today, Ms. Tabitha Alves, 17 years old from Queenstown, Essequibo, Ms. Divine Ross, 18 years old, Riverstown, Essequibo Coast, and Kira Mahadio, 15 years old from Undernimming, Essequibo Coast. 
The opposing team is the Cummings Lodge Youth Movement. The members of this group are enthusiastic individuals who are passionate about community development. The group is involved in a wide range of voluntary activities, including skills training. The three speakers today are Mr. Richard Bainey, 22 years old, from Cummings Lodge. Mr. Vikash Basdio, 33 years old, from Industry. And Mr. Puran Dayal Omacharan, 32 years old, from Industry also. Today's moot. Oil is a detriment to Guyana. I declare the, op the debate open and call on the first speaker for the proposition, Ms. Tabitha Alves from the Queenstown Youth Group to make her presentation. Tabitha? Esteemed judges, Mr. Speaker, indulgent friends of the opposition, audience all, a pleasant morning to you. I, Tabitha Owls, deem it a privilege to stand humbly before you as the first speaker of the proposition, strongly proposing the move which states, and I quote, oil is a detriment to Guyana. As the first speaker, I'll be defining the key terms in this move and highlighting the negative effects of oil on our environment. Our second speaker will explain the substantial impact of oil on our economy and our third speaker will look at the importance of legislation and oil. I now redefine really and say that we firmly believe that oil is indeed a detriment to Guyana. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, oil is defined as a vicious liquid derived from petroleum, especially for the use as fuel or lubricant. Detriment defined by the Oxford Dictionary is the state of being harmed or damaged. On May 20th, 2015, the Auburn, Texas Exxon Mobil Corporation announced a significant oil discovery on a Starbuck block, which is located 120 miles offshore Guyana. In recent news, more emphasis has and still is being placed on the sovereign wealth fund, glaringly neglecting the negative effects of oil on our environment. Impartial judges, climate change and its impact on our environment is no stranger to us. With the drilling of oil here in Guyana, toxic gases are being released into the atmosphere to approach this fall clearing. These gases include methane, black carbon, and volatile organic compound, which leads to air pollution. Black carbon and methane are both powerful climate forces, and black carbon and VOCs are dangerous air pollutants. Flaring has a substantial impact on our health. It affects our respiratory system, hence breathing difficulties. With the release of these toxins, it poses a catastrophic effect on climate change. Members of the opposition, permit me to enlighten you on an article that was published by the Center for International Environmental Law on July 23, 2019, which read, and I quote, ExxonMobil has estimated Guyana's offshore oil field for more than 5.5 billion barrels. If born, this will be equivalent to 80.8 million metric tons of CO2 greenhouse gases per year, more than nine times of Guyana's population CO2 emissions annually. The steady increase of global warming will continue and temperature rises will be significant. Members of the opposition, are you aware that Ghana has been drained 2.7 million, I repeat 2.7 billion cubic meters of gas over a six months period, ranking us as one of the top five countries in the world for volume cleared per year. This was revealed by the Global Gas Tracker. These viewers can be compared to the removal of 123,000 acres of forest. Mr. Speaker, we are aware that everything comes with a cost and so does drilling. Are, are one of us numerous pristine sea creatures and plants. If an oil spill is to occur, it will be disastrous not only to our marine and wildlife, but also to their habitat and more openly the disruption of our ecosystem, thereby leading to long-term ecological change as we witnessed in the Gulf of Mexico in 2010. But the pollution not only threatens Guyana's environment and water supply, but also the livelihood of our people. Global Citizen published an article on November 18, 2019, which stated, and I quote, Guyana fisheries are some of the largest employers, providing jobs for 25,000 people. Emissions also have the capacity to render agricultural lands barren. In 
closing intelligent members of the opposition, it is evident that oil is indeed a detriment to our beloved Guyana, and it has numerous environmental effects such as climate change, pollution, and also the loss of livelihood for people. I thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Alves. And now for the first speaker from the opposition, Mr. Richard Bainey, the Cummings Lodge Youth Movement. Richard, it is now your turn to make your presentation. Mr. Speaker, judges, my learned friends, a pleasant good morning to you all. The proposition, thank you for those definitions. You have saved me some time there. But we are here to demonstrate one thing and one thing only. And that is oil is a catalyst to propel the much needed development of our country and is not a detriment. Guyana's oil, which is being described as sweet, light, crude, has attracted global recognition. A Reuters June 30, 2021 article highlighted that Indian Oil Corporation, India's largest oil refinery, purchased 1 million barrels of oil, of our oil, because of its quality. So there is no doubt that it is in demand. Judges, the Ministry of Finance in their public debt report 2020 disclosed that for that year, Guyana's real gross domestic product, an indicator of a healthy economy, grew by a gigantic 43.5%. This increase was recorded amidst a global pandemic which ravaged the world and halted out what was responsible for the growth of the country's real GDP. The report explicitly states that it is oil. Judges, a rice that energy trend, the trend article noted that Guyana's total annual oil revenues could reach US 10 billion by 2030 annually. Can you imagine the impact of those revenues? Judges, the proposition might tell you about Dutch disease. The paradox whereby a country's broader econ economy is damaged due to factors such as the discovery of oil, oil and the production thereof. And this is possible where a country specializes in that alone. But our president, Dr. Ali, at the Guyana Basin Summit 2021, which was held on March 17, explained how proceeds from the oil will be heavily invested to develop the country's traditional sectors. And government officials are in the press every day explaining how this will be done as well. Financial analyst Joel Bagundin is quoted in the Guyana Times February 4, 2021 article as saying that the plans the government have is right to is the right course to avoid the Dutch disease. My friends, no doubt in some countries there has been mismanagement of their oil sectors, for example, due to corruption, which has caused their countries to collapse. But Penelli, in his October 2019 article published in the Journal of the World NG Law and Business, noted Guyana has low levels of corruption and highlighted the Guyanese judiciary is recognized as having a strong institutional foundation and this will prevent that. Also in 2019, Guyana in collaboration with the World Bank launched the Petroleum Resources Government Management Project to support Guyana in the process of improving its regulatory and institutional framework as well as strengthening capacity of key institutions to manage the oil and gas sector. The government has also recognized issues with the country's legislative framework to govern the oil industry and issues with dispute resolution, human resources, you name it. But the Attorney General in the November 2020 Guyana Chronicle article expounded on a comprehensive legal framework being developed for the petroleum sector. And since we are in the legal sector, did you know Guyana is on path to become an arbitration empire because of oil? Check the December 9th edition of the Guyana Chronicle. Judges, since 2017, the government has begun developing a local content policy to ensure local producers and, and services are much involved in this sector. This shows that we had a plan long now. In closing, I would like to remind that Exxon Mobile intends on having five FPS solar vessels operating in Guyana by 2020 which means the country will be producing 1 billion barrels of oil per day. Guyana does not have an infinite amount of oil. It will run out. But by the time the oil runs out, Guyana would have developed itself to sustain itself for centuries to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Bainey. This is the first semifinals in the Speaker's National Youth Debating Competition 
Today we have the Queenstown Youth Group versus the Cummings Lodge Youth Movement. And we are now about to call the second speaker for the proposition. The proposition, the moot is, oil is a detriment to Guyana. The second speaker for the proposition is Ms. Divine Ross. Ms. Ross, it is now your turn. Sagacious judges, honorable speaker, clever members of the opposition, attentive audience all, pleasant morning to you. I am Divine Ross, second speaker of the proposition, here to firmly propose the moot and I quote, oil is a detriment to Guyana, end of quote. Judicious judges, Ghana's share in the deal is fairly unreasonable. Friends of the opposition, for your information and guidance, Guyana has to pay for all costs that comes with oil production. Yes, all of it. Apart from that, Guyana is already borrowing millions of dollars for oil production. So you tell me, make it make sense. Large amounts of expense, loans, most of the revenue going to the oil companies. What is left for our country? Every time a new well is being drilled, it means more expense is being put on Guyana. In addition, there is also evidence of the Dutch disease in the country, where the broader economy is being harmed. As a result of everyone's excitement in oil, almost everywhere one goes, you would hear persons talking about the oil money and waiting for the oil money. According to an article published by the Starbuck newspaper dated the 2nd of August 2019, it stated that the Dutch disease is already in Guyana due to the big oil discovery and that the phenom phenomenon decreases the price comp competitiveness of exports in the country's manufacturing sector, goods and increased imports. Think about it. How could this be good for a country's economy? Honorable judges, attentive audience, the members of the opposition may want to argue and say, let's look to the future, more so long-term impacts. Sure, why not? According to an article published by AIFA, Tuesday, October 27, 2020, Guyana in five years will experience total cash losses in their annual budget of 160 million, need to borrow 482 million to pay for an annual revenue from the oil and gas users, since it's volatile and too low to cover costs. Owe 20 billion to development costs to the oil company at the end of the five years period. Rely on Exxon Mobil, a declining global economy in an unstable and shrinking industry. Guyana will receive revenue each year. It will also incur large expenses to generate this revenue. Oh, and the natural resource fund will be good for Guyana. According to international consultant Melinda Janke, it is an attempt it to use people's greed and gullibility to distract them from the grave danger oil poses to Guyana. All the oil revenue has to be put aside to cover costs of shutting down the wells, which could be 40 billion US dollars. People should stop fooling themselves about oil and accept that it is a net cost to the economy. Members of the opposition, do not stifle your conflict. Oil is indeed a detriment to Guyana. Let us all pay attention to the evidences before us and not put our faith in the hopeless projections. I now put you in the hands of our church speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ross. And the second speaker for the opposition is Mr. Vikash Basdio from the Cummings Lodge Youth Movement. Vikash, it is now your turn. Mr. Speaker, judges and proposition, I rise to continue my team's argument and explain clearly why oil is not a detriment to Guyana. Most large judges, as a result of oil, Guyana now convened summits like the Guyana International Petroleum Business Summit and Exhibition, which have over 150 international and local business and services exhibiting what they have to offer. It also attracts over 200 attendees from across the world. This is conducive to foreign direct investment as investors come from all over the world to experience our country, but it also creates the opportunity for local enterprises to develop themselves to meet international standards. Is this a danger to Guyana? Certainly not. Most esteemed judges, 
In 2019 alone, there was a 60.5 cent FDI totaling US $826.4 million as reported by the Ministry of Finance, which resulted directly from our oil discoveries. For the Guyana is also expected to be on full display to an audience of more than 25 million persons as Dubai's Expo 2020 commences from October 1, 2021, according to the Minister of Commerce. Erudite judges, my first speaker, informed you of the contraction of the non-oil sector as reported in the public debt report. But did you know, because of the activity directly, the oil sector there is now growing within the sec these sectors? According to the former head of the EPA, Dr. Vincent Adams, in a press conference on August 7, 2017, one of the key challenges government and while trying to implement measures to enhance the agriculture industry is a lack of adequate funding. However, with revenue from oil production, Guyana now has the ability to radically transform agriculture and realize its potential as the breadbasket of the region. Judges, local infrastructure to facilitate the oil boom is necessary and Guyanese will have to develop skills to service the industry. Proposition, the new Demerara Bridge is expected to cost us in excess of US $300 million to build. Where do you want the money to come from? In conclusion, oil will definitely have a profound positive impact on our economy. It will also improve the living standard of our people, as well as create excellent investment opportunities. I therefore affirm our team's position. Oil is not, and I repeat, is not a detriment to Guyana. I rest my case. Thank you very much, Vikash, Mr. Basdio. The third speaker for the proposition, the moot in the semi-final of the Speaker's National Youth Debating Competition, the moot oil is a detriment to Guyana. Third speaker for the proposition, Ms. Kira Mahadio from the Queenstown Youth Group. Kira, it is now your turn. As two judges, Mr. Speaker, learned friends of the opposition, viewers, good morning. I, Piero Mohadio, stand before you as the third speaker of the, of the proposition to bring finality to our arguments in support of the move, which states, and I quote, oil is a detriment to Guyana, end of quote. In 1986, the Petroleum Act of Guyana was passed. However, this act is insufficient in every aspect of oil production. Based on an article by Datadin Singh dated March 18, 2019, titled Guyana Wholly Unprepared for Regulating Oil Sector, stated, and I quote, Nothing else really happened until 1986 when we passed the Petroleum Act. Now, that act really only provides for a license, how you issue license. It has nothing to do with the myriad of issues you have to deal with. End of quote. Esteemed judges, since the Petroleum Act only caters for the exploration and production of petroleum, if there is if there is an oil spill, flaring of gas, or any similar problem, ExxonMobil does not compensate for the damages made, and Guyana, as a developing country, would have to bear the cost of their negligence. We would be exposed to a number of natural disasters. Additionally, when the gov when the government has to spend unnecessary money. Fixing problems that could have been avoided, there would be less money available to the government for spending on more important activities such as education and health care. Mr. Speaker, is this not harmful for Guyana? It is indeed. Secondly, in 2015, Guyana signed the Paris Agreement at the 21st session of the Conference of Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Guyana's forest is of immense value to the world because of its carbon capturing properties. However, because of the detrimental effects that came with the discovery of oil in Guyana, from an article published by the UN institution dated July 23, 2019, read, and I quote, the proposed project would put Guyana in serious violation of the Paris Agreement and jeopardize international efforts to slow down climate change. And end of quote. To add, Guyana is being paid by Norway 
some 250 million, yes, 250 million dollars to preserve its lush forest. The drilling of oil threatens this. In closing, I trust that the points delivered by my team and I drive the note of conviction to you in that oil is indeed a detriment to our beautiful Guyana. I thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Mahadio. And the final speaker in this first semifinals of the national, the speaker's national youth debating competition is Mr. Puran Dayal Omachuran from the Cummings Lodge Youth Movement. Puran, it is now your turn to make your presentation. Mr. Speaker, respected judges, members of the proposition, I will be expounding on how oil production will actually fuel a green state agenda, dismantling the proposition's argument that oil production is a detriment to the environment. Law and judges, there is no doubt that the environmental protection and progression in Guyana needs huge funding to ensure sustainable management and for the implementation and enforcement of environmental regulators. Mr. Speaker, the World Bank 2020 report titled Pivotal Moment for Guyana recognize that the revenue from oil can be used to accomplish this. Countries such as Norway are already utilizing their oil funds to accomplish such feats. They even help Guyana fund the low carbon development strategy. Members of the proposition, if you follow the press, you already know our government has long recognized oil revenue as a catalyst for achieving a green state and has maintained that oil revenue will be used to modernize traditional sectors and to further embrace the principles of sustainable development. The LCDS, which was resuscitated, was launched since 2009 and is a mechanism that is in place to mitigate global carbon emissions and will progress greatly from oil funding. My Lord friends, how do you think the equipment necessary for a green state agenda is made from crude? In Bloomberg 2020 article on Long Green Energy, one of the world's largest producers of solar panels stated fossil fuel are still largely being manufactured. In Technology being used in Twitter, Gina McCartney, one area of modernization is the water treatment technologies, which reduces the impact to the surrounding water and ecosystem. In 2020 article titled Biodiversity System Notes, ExxonMobil uses this technology. Another technological advancement is dispersants, a chemical use to remove oil from water surface in case of spill, such as those used during the Deepwater Horizon oil spill of 2015 which the U.S. EPA said produce positive outcome. Propositions, stakeholders not blinded to your arguments. This is why they are currently implementing mechanisms to prevent and mitigate negative impacts from the oil industry. Guyana's EPA already established the oil and gas unit in 2019 to regulate and monitor activities in this sector. Just last month, our CDC trained in oil spill response as part of the U.S. military trade winds exercise. Guyana ourselves is doing our part to contribute. Most of the countries who experience environmental impacts does not have the slum of South America, that is Amazon rainforest, in their backyard. The top part in this case is harmful environmental impacts. So judges, how can oil still be a detriment to Guyana? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Macharan from the Cummings Lodge Youth Movement. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the first set of presentations from the two groups today in the first semi-finals of the speaker's national youth debating competition the moot was oil is a detriment to guyana the two teams are cummings lodge youth group and the opposition and queenstown youth group the proposition for queenstown we had tabitha Alves, the lead speaker Divine Ms. Divine Ross and Ms. Kira Mahadio. And from the Cummings Lodge Youth Movement, we had Mr. Richard Bainey, Mr. Vikash Bastio, and Mr. Puran Dayal Omacharan. We are now going to give our two teams an opportunity to get their thoughts together. 
so that we can have their rebuttals. Let me apologize to those of you who have been online for some time waiting. We've had a few technical difficulties which took about 15 minutes to remedy. I will now ask our public relations officer for the parliament, Mr. Yannick December, to speak a little bit about the speaker's national youth debating competition. Yannick. Hello, every Hello everyone. I'm Yannick December, public relations public officer relations here public relations here. Here. office. I'm also a member of the planning committee for the speaker's national youth debating competition a competition which serves as a feeder into the 6th Annual Youth Parliament 2021. Youth Parliament was first hosted by the National Assembly in 2015 under the speakership of the Honorable Raphael Trotman. This year, Speaker of the National Assembly, the Honorable Mansur Nadir, thought it best to widen participation to allow more youths to become knowledgeable of the institution of Parliament. 16 youth groups from across our educational districts are participating in this competition. Eight of those groups will advance to participate in Youth Parliament 2021. What's in it for you, you may ask? Trophies, plaques, cash prizes, tablets, and a laptop for the best debater in the final debate. The final debate will be held at 2 p.m. on Friday, the 9th of July, 2021. We are pleased to have you tune into this competition and promise that you will have robust debates from our debaters. I will now hand you over to the Speaker of the National Assembly, the Honorable Manzur Nadir. Thank you, Mr. December. Hello, everyone. I'm Yannick December. Public Visit social media to hear what others are saying about the competition. So far today, we have had a very balanced set of comments and mainly surrounding good wishes to all the teams. So said Ravi Sukraj, Ivorina Pana, Yavindra Ramsarup, Babita Alana, <coughs> Babita Alana Singh, all giving their good wishes to the teams. We have in another three minutes, we are going to return to the two teams for today. But before I, I do so, let me say a word of appreciation from the Speaker's National Youth Debating Competition and Parliament to the Honorable Charles Ramson, Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport and the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport for identifying the 16 youth groups that started out this competition some three weeks ago. We started with 16 teams from across eight regions and the 16 ended up with eight in the quarterfinals which were held last week and today we just saw the initial presentations from the, the first semi-finalists, six presenters this morning. We also want to express our gratitude to the nine judges who continue to give of their service to the competition and all of the organizing committee members. Our judges today, our judges today are Miss Valerie Gurusami Smith, who is our chief judge. Miss Gurusami Smith has been an educator for 42 years. She is versed in debating. She has won debating titles for the University of Guyana, and she participated in two international debates, one in New York and one in St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. She lectures on the issue of mastering the art of public speaking. Our next judge is Ms. Mir Miracle Miller. Judge Miller is from the Georgetown Stabrook Leo's Club. She has been the best graduating English student in the year 2021 from Christchurch Secondary School. She participated in youth training programs hosted by the Department of Youth 
and was selected as one of our youth ambassadors to the United Nations Assembly in 2018. She is pursuing and she is in the final month of her BSc in Applied and Exploration Geology. I'm sure this particular debate is of much interest to her and to everyone. And the final judge is Mr. Neil Marks. Mr. Marks is in the media for over 22 years, has recently been the past president of the Guyana Press Association. Neil has written and his work has been carried in New York and London. He has been very involved in community enhancement. Neil speaks Mandarin and promotes Creole language and community-based news hubs in minority languages. Those are our three judges. And we're just going to ask our staff to check with the two groups to see if they are ready. We're about to call the two groups today back for the rebuttals, the first group is the, on the rebuttal side of the debate, is the Cummings Lodge Youth Movement. The opposing team is the Queenstown Youth Group. And the first presentation from, for the rebuttal, it's going to be from the opposition and that person is Mr. Richard Bainey from the Cummings Lodge Youth Movement. Richard, are you ready? Yes, Mr. Speaker, I'm not ready. Okay, let's, the judge, let's give the judges a few more moments. Richard, the first, the speaker for the proposition who will be doing the rebuttal is Ms. Tavita Alves. And we have two presenters here who have impressed throughout the competition. And that is why today they are in the semifinals and leading their teams in this competition. So the judges are having a very difficult time. So Richard, please bear with us. We're going to be also asking our um, our NCN, Globespan, and those who are carrying our feed live to bear with us. We had some technical hitches today, and we may go till around 11.15. The judges are in place, and our rebuttal persons are also in place. The mood today, oil is a detriment to Guyana, the opposition, Cummings Lodge Youth Movement and Mr. Richard Bainey will lead off on the rebuttal side. Richard, now it's your turn to impress the judges. Richard, go ahead. You're on the air. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Judges, my learned friends on the proposition bench, if we were to come here and school you on the benefits of oil for our economy and our country, we would be here all day. So we have to bring a few points. But to address your concerns, Ms. Els, this for a speaker, she spoke about the removal of the forest and the carbon emissions. But didn't you hear when Puren told you about the LCDS strategy, which is fully in place? She spoke about the water impacts and the impacts to the ecosystem and surrounding environment. She may have mentioned of the 2010 disaster in Mexico, but didn't you hear poor and tell you of the 2015 disaster that was curbed because of technological advancement in the industry? And this is five years apart from your reference to, to mitigate and to stop certain devastating impacts. He spoke about agricultural lands. But Vic came and he told you about how agricultural investments and diversity will be boosted from oil funds, did he not? Ms. Ross, she came and told us of how the proceeds from oil will be 
so little after so much is deducted. But I told you up before the 3.5% growth in our real GDP for the year 2020. I also enlightened you that seven point, there was a 7.3% contraction of the non-oil sector. So how do you think that growth was um, possible? To over 2,600 plus percent of um, oil, the oil sector recorded over 2,600 percent growth. And that is why we could have seen that far to 3.5 percent um, growth in our economy. She also spoke of long term effects. I heard you spoke of some cost of millions. But I reiterate my point of how large the oil industry is. How much money do you think we will be making? Certainly it is not a minuscule amount. She spoke of unstable and unstable and shrinking industry. But did you not hear who and enlightened you that to move to a green state agenda, it is crude oil that is being used to manufacture equipment and he mentioned what the treatment equipment just the name of you uh, just the name one that is moving us towards that agenda and this will take us to a green state economy uh miss mahanio the last speaker she spoke of the petroleum act being archaic but did you not hear me tell you the attorney general is already working on that the guy has a massive plan the guidance to radically transform the petroleum sector in relation to the legislation. I did mention that to you. She spoke of spending of money will be limited because it will have to be used in elsewhere. But I come back to the point of the economy and the revenue. I did say to you that revenue, the government's revenue from oil annually will exceed at least 10 billion US by 2026. That is the world I'm proposing. They spoke of preserving the lush forest. I already touched on that with the LCDS strategy. Every point that they have brought here, we have dismantled. So come with you. In conclusion, I would say one thing. And it's something I was getting at at the end of my debate. Guyana will use as a catalyst for growth and development. Guyana intends to employ a green state agenda and Guyana will use proceeds from oil to get there. How else do you want us to get there? We are a poor nation. We need it. And for us to achieve that and to sustain ourselves after the oil dries out, because I told you it will only last approximately 40 years, we need it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Bainey from the Cummings Lodge youth movement and now it is time for Ms. Tabitha Alves from the Queenstown Youth Group for the proposition to make her rebuttal. Tabitha, this is your opportunity to impress our judges. Esteemed judges, Mr. Speaker, intelligent members of the opposition, I rise once again to review the preposterous claims made by members of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, the first speaker of the opposition mentioned that the growth again has seen. However, however, as two judges, as I mentioned, Ghana has been earning 2.7 billion, I repeat, 2.7 billion cubic meters of gas over a six month period, ranking us as one of the top five countries in the world. This was revealed by the Global Gas Tracker. Intelligent members of the opposition, let's weigh this out. Are Guyanese lives will work more than money? Mr. Speaker, the second speaker of the opposition also mentioned that our oil sector will attract other investors. But permit me to reiterate a point mentioned by my third speaker. Ghana has been paid 250 million by Norway to preserve our first forest. If audience, if we are to continue to drill oil, how would Guyana be able to be promoted when we are damaging the same marine, wildlife, and generally the environment? 
The second speaker also mentioned about the benefits of oil, but according to my second speaker, a research by AIFA stated, and I quote, Ghana will experience total, total cash losses in their annual budget and will have to borrow large amounts of money. Oil is indeed a detriment to our beautiful Guyana. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, how can we put, how can we as Guyanese put our hope in the projections when we have evidence right before us that oil is indeed a detriment to our beloved Guyana? Additionally, when our environment is being destroyed, what will become of the safety of our people and the jobs affected, more so the fishing industry? I now state once more that oil is indeed, I repeat, oil is indeed a detriment to our beloved Guyana. I thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Zalves from the Queenstown Youth Group. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the two teams presenting their original presentations and the rebuttals, concluding all of the presentations for the first semi-final debate in the Speaker's National Youth Debating Competition. We'll give our judges an opportunity to tabulate their scores and to discuss who will emerge as winners this morning. The winner for today, or winners for today, the morning's debate and the afternoon will advance on Friday to the finals of the Speaker's National Youth Debating Competition, which will be held at the Arthur Chung Convention Center. And for all of our debaters, 48 of them that started out a few weeks ago from 16 youth group, every single uh, person who participated in this debate will be physically present at the finals. Yes, we are using the dome of the convention center and there will be <coughs> proper, excuse me, proper <coughs> spacing of participants at the finals. The moot that we heard this morning was oil is a detriment to Guyana. I see our judges are still in the huddle. Our judges, Judge Neil Marks, Judge Valerie, Gurusami Smith, and Judge Miracle Miller. At the end, <coughs> excuse me, at the end, this afternoon, after the debate, we will have the two winners who will move forward to the finals on Friday. We want to continue to give words of appreciation to the Honorable Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport, the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport, NCN, Globespan, the Learning Channel, those have carried these debates live for us and rebroadcast it also. The comments from the young people and other persons who followed the debate on social media, media, thank you very much. The coaches who worked with the teams, um, thank you, thank you also. We have seen some great presentations and we have seen some great discoveries during this competition. Our compliments, congratulations and commendations to all of our clubs, all of our participants. We are going to make this speaker's youth debating competition a calendar event. The objective being to s make our people at all levels aware of the democratic institutions and their functions. The three arms of government being the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. We at the legislature are using these activities to make our people more aware 
of the functions of the National Assembly and the Parliament. The Parliament comprising the National Assembly and His Excellency, the President. We continue to monitor what's happening on social media and we have had so many feedback outside of social media concerning the competition and we want to thank all of you for your kind words of encouragement. Our opposition chief, acting chief whip, Mr. Ganesh Mahipal would like to see us continue this as a calendar event also. I think the judges are having a difficult time. It's the semi-finals and here is where the best of the best comes out. When I say best, it's the best presentation from the best teams in the competition and they have delivered today, both sides have delivered today. I see the judges now retreating to their individual seats. Remind you of our judges today. Chief Judge, Ms. Valerie Gurusami smith Judge Miracle Miller. I'm sure she had to work a miracle to separate the teams here this morning. It is close. And Mr. Neil Marks, Judge Marks, I trust that he has given maximum marks to all of our participants. So now our chief judge, she's ready? So once, once you're ready, no, no, we'll have some comments from our judges, starting with Mr. Marks. Let's hear what his marks are. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I can tell you one side got more marks than the other. <laughs> I wanted to congratulate both teams for the energy that you brought today. The moot was, of course, one that is very relevant to uh, what is happening in Guyana at the time, and there's a ton of information that is available, and I think that lent itself to both sides trying to uh, cram a lot of information uh, together. I really struggled on one side to get your arguments. For me, it 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 didn't flow and the other side therefore beat you out not that they had like a really great advantage but in in my mind uh, one team did a bit better than the other side and uh, just like i've emphasized uh, throughout the debate i really would have liked to see the the individual debaters hold down one or two points and really expound on them to be able to uh, convinced me and I didn't find that happened on both sides today. So those are my comments. Congratulations again uh, to both teams for your participation. Judge Marks do really mark very hard. And it's been an honor for me to be in the presence of a miracle throughout this competition. Uh, in person, Miracle Judge Miracle Miller. Judge Miller. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, everyone. Today's competition was a close one. I can say that. The topic was indeed, it is a relevant topic, and we heard arguments coming from both sides. Mr. Marx did indicate that one side brought a lot of topics, but they failed to expound. Um, this topic is one that is dear to me because in studying geology, we have to study oil as a part of it. I heard things such as the Dutch disease, flaring, compromising the Paris Agreement, where we pay to keep our forests. Arguments came out about investors coming into Guyana. And, and one thing I noticed from one of the teams, their second speaker spoke about Guyana being the breadbasket of the Caribbean, but then the first speaker compromised that by saying that we are a poor country. I found that very conflicting from the one side. Uh, we heard arguments about improving standard of living, opening doors for skills training, and we heard about more infrastructure being built for Guyana. All in all, both of the arguments were good for me just could have been expounded upon a bit more to give us a clearer 
view of what you were trying to say. But in conclusion, I would like to say congratulations to the winner of today's debate. It was really a close one. Thank you, Judge Miller and Chief Judge Dr. Valerie Gurusami Smith. Good afternoon, everyone. Mr. Speaker, all the listening folks across Guyana and around the world, we were treated to quite a debate today with a topic, um, the topic that says Guyana oil is a detriment, a strong word. Um, I want to congratulate both team for following a line of argument that they believed in based on their definitions and the restatement of the moat. They stayed in the directions of their discussion. So that is a congratulations to both teams to stick together. There were signs of group work. There were signs of cohesion. Um, the first speaker on both sides did give us a clear picture as to what the team will be handling, each member of the team, that is. Um, the Speaker's National Youth De Debating Competition indeed today reached a point where for the first time in the judging experience in this competition, we had a little rough time because both teams show signs of research. One team went very scientific, um, giving us all the science of the, of the presence of oil in Guyana and what it can do to our country. And the other side gave us quite a treat to tell us how rich we will become and how productive we will become and how it will flow over into other sectors in our, um, in our country. Both teams did treat us to an argument to the point where the gap between the two teams is very minimal, very minimal. Um, I want to say that reading on one team really was at a disadvantage. Um, maybe if they didn't read, the, the um, final conclusion of the debate would have swung in a different direction. So again, in debating, we have to be very careful not to be slavishly um, stuck to our notes. There were good points, but being read, I often say to folks that debating is public speaking and not public reading. So that really um, worked against one of the teams. All in all, it was a very good debate. Um, teams did miss out some points that we, I was really looking forward as a strong point that can, could have taken the debate in another direction as well. I feel strongly that um, management of the oil in Guyana could have been handled better or could have been emphasized more um, because if it's a detriment, I believe it could go in the direction of management. Now, um, in Guyana, we are sending people now to study about oil and gas. So um, I believe that could have been included and make a very strong argument. However, debate, the debate today was really good. And um, we have come to a conclusion. The difference between the totals of the two group is just four points. So I want us to truly congratulate both teams. Truly, let's give them a round of applause, even before I announce the winner. I think they did well. Um, for all the debates I've judged, I, we did not come to such a close margin. And like I said, had they not read, it would have gone in the other direction. So today, it's our privilege, based on the request of the speaker, that we choose best speaker from both teams. So the best speaker for the proposition goes to Ms. Tabita Alves from Queenstown Youth Group. Give her a round of applause. Very good delivery. And the best speaker for the opposition went to no other than Mr. Vikash Basdev. Best speaker for opposition. The better rebuttal went to the opposition. And the winner of today's semifinals and who will be going to the finals on Friday is no other than the opposition. <laughs>
the opposition with 245 points and the proposition with 241 points. Give it up for the teams. And the point is, if the proposition did not read so much, they would have been taken. Queenstown Youth Group would have been taken away the win. So Thank it has been quite a treat today. Thank you so much. Thank Mr. you Speaker. very much, Chief Judge. I see um, Mr. Bainey doing his the Fortnite dance <laughs> at the back. Congratulations to both teams. Queenstown, you have been a, an inspiration. You have from the very first debate, you've impressed us. I happen to have passed through your village on Sunday also. Good luck to you. I'm sure we're going to hear and see you again. And definitely on Friday, we will be finally physically meeting all of you. Congratulations to both groups. Congratulations to the best debaters. And congratulations to the Cummings Lodge Youth Group for making it into the finals. Thank you all, thank you judges. Have a good rest of the day.